Chris Cornell. He seemed like a, you know, I had him on the show a couple of times. What a great fucking guy. And I know you were close with him. The guy was such a good guy. Like he, he really pulled for your band and for you. That must have been a horrible loss for you. I mean, it's sad. It's just so fucking sad. Um, so I got taken away that second there. Um, you know, I was, what was going through your head that, that you got taken away? You know, I was saying I, I grew up with three brothers and, and about a year um, before what happened with, with Chris, um, we got a call at four in the morning and it was my other brother and he was telling me that um, our third youngest brother um, named Chris, uh, he had been spending a lot of time in Africa, kind of going back and forth, but kind of almost nine months a year in Africa. He was doing some good work and environmental stuff and had a decent job and some, and was part of a cool community. And then he was doing something a bit risky and a bit of a climbing accident and he was no longer with us. And, um, that one took me down so hard and my brothers and my mom. And, uh, I seriously didn't know if I was going to get out of that one. And, and it, it, and it really hurt me to think of what my daughters were witnessing, but there was no hiding it and it was a dark place and I just couldn't deal with the, the reality. And when it happened with Chris, um, I gotta say, I, I don't, I still don't think I've, I've, I've had to be somewhat in denial and one one way I was even able to do it and, and it's not I don't even feel like I had a choice. I just like I was just terrified where I would go if if I allowed myself to feel what I needed to feel or what I was instinctively wanted to feel or if I how dark I felt like I was gonna go. And because I didn't see him that often in the last ten years, probably only like four or five times and usually at a gig or something, you know. Um yeah, I just kind of, I still haven't quite dealt with it or, you know, I'll, I'll get stronger as, as time goes and, and, you know, but I, I, you know, we were close, you know, and, and it wasn't just because we were playing music or we were, you know, neighbors, we would do, I would hang out with him outside of the band more than, you know, even the other band guys. And I didn't know that many people in Seattle. So we would go on, you know, crazy hiking adventures or we'd go mountain biking or we would chase the dog in the rain with drinking shitty beer and, you know, and it was cool because it had nothing to do with anything like being around other music people or being around or some kind of LA life or something. It was just cool. Like, wow, this is what a, this is what like a quote unquote, like, a, like a, he was like legit rock star. Right. This is what he's doing. He's chasing a dog in the rain with his <laughs> buddy on a Saturday night with a 12 pack of Schmidt. I thought there was a beautiful thing that you taught Chris Cornell's daughter to uh, surf. I, I, I can't think of something better than that, that you took something that you love, you know, and you shared it with her. It was before any, some of that heavy stuff happened. But, and, and that was just, they were in the Oh. neighborhood but what that's his oldest daughter that we've grown up with in seattle and tremendous tremendous girl she's she's a badass and uh she's been kind of like a, a big sister to, to my kids and yeah she took it up pretty good she was getting waves <laughs> yeah, that's it 